In the last video, we were able to make a basic query to Firestore and get data back. In this video, we want to add some structure into that data and clean up the query. So right now we're getting this data back and we can print out the data using document.data, but it's kind of hard to work with. What we really would like is to define a model class or a data class in Kotlin, which will encapsulate a user and a post. And doing operations on these post or user data classes will be much easier compared to working with a JSON map. So what I'm going to do is open up the project window. I'm going to create a new package called models. And this models package will contain each data class for our application, one for a post model and one for a user model. These are both going to be data classes. And what we're trying to encapsulate is every attribute of a post or a user should belong inside of these classes. And when we get data back from Firestore or when we're uploading data to Firestore, we should send data in this format. And Firebase will be able to do the translation between the JSON map, which is really what we're dealing with inside the database and translating that into a post model and a user model. And there are some quirks in how you have to write the data class in order to make sure that the serialization process works. First is that every attribute on the data class has to be a var, not a val. So it has to be mutable. And the other thing is you need to have a default value for every attribute. So you need to, for example, specify this to be an empty string for username. And then the other attribute for user is going to be age and that's going to be of type int. And so the default value here can be zero. Post will be similar. We'll create a data class post. And we want to include an attribute here for everything we know about a post. So we'll have a description. This is of type string and an image URL, also of type string. creation time milliseconds. This will be of type long. And finally, a user. And this user is referring to the owner of this post. And this is going to be a pointer to the other model that we just find called user. One more really important point about allowing Firebase to do the serialization and deserialization is that these attribute names must match exactly what the attribute is called in Firebase. So if you look at user, we have username and age, all in lowercase. And if you go back to the Firebase console, go to users, inside the user, we have an age and username, all lowercase. So that actually works out. However, in the posts collection, we have creation time milliseconds with underscores in between creation time and milliseconds. Whereas if you go back to the post data class, this is written using camel case, which is a convention in Kotlin. So in order to make that translation happen between the underscore separated and camel case, you have to add an annotation. So we'll say get property name. And you pass in the name of the attribute as it's written inside of the Firebase console. So in this example, it'll be creation underscore time underscore milliseconds. And I'm not sure why exactly it's entirely necessary, but you also need to do the same thing for the setter. So it's a getter and a setter. And then we want to do something similar for the image URL. So we call it image underscore URL inside of Firebase console. So let's make sure that the spelling here is exactly identical to the spelling inside of Firebase console, and then you won't, you shouldn't have any problems with the serialization or deserialization. Once that's done, go back into postsactivity.kotlin, and we can test this out by mapping the list of posts that we get back, snapshot.documents, and translating that into a list of post data class objects. The way we can do that is by saying snapshot.toobjects and passing in the post class reference. Now let's capture this in a local variable, which we'll call post list. And so now instead of iterating through the list of snapshot documents, let's go through the list of posts. 
and hopefully it should be quite similar to what we were seeing earlier. All right, let's run it and see what happens. I'm going to open up LogCat because we don't actually expect any changes in the UI. Okay, so we see a blank screen as we expect. And if we look inside of LogCat, we see post followed by a string representation of the post, which includes the description, image URL, creation time milliseconds, and the embedded user information, which is perfect, exactly what we wanted. The last thing I want to do in this video is show you some of the other powers of the Firestore querying API. So one pretty natural thing that we'll want to do is limit the number of results we get back. So you can imagine if we have hundreds or thousands of posts, we only want to show a handful of them. The way we can do that is by adding extra conditions while constructing the posts reference. So right now we're looking at all documents inside of firestoredb.collection posts, but we can also add a limit with a number here and just add pass in 20. And then one other thing we can do is order the posts that we get back by a certain field. And the field that we care about is the creation time milliseconds. And again, you want to make sure that this exactly matches up with the attribute name inside of each post. We'd like to order posts by creation time in a certain direction, which is the second parameter that we can pass in here. We want the most recent posts at the top. Those are the ones which have the highest creation time in milliseconds, which means that the parameter we should pass in here is descending. Let's try it. So right now, let's just look at the order that we got back without running this. So the first one we got back is Golden Gate Bridge, then Hipster Look, then Favorite Panda. If we run this, we should now see the order change because I'm pretty sure that the order I created these in was different. Now we can see that my favorite panda is the most recent post, which makes sense, followed by the Golden Gate Bridge, and then the earliest post that we created was the hipster look. So this may this means this makes sense. The last thing I'd like to do is point out a really cool feature of Firestore. By using Add Snapshot Listener, our app will automatically receive updates when any document in this collection changes. If the details of any post changes, Firebase will automatically call Add Snapshot Listener and we'll get notified of the new data without writing a single line of code. So one thing we can try, I'll just press enter a few times in LogCat and then bring Android Studio to one side. Let's update the description for the Golden Gate Bridge post that we have. And when we do that, what we expect is that the callback defined inside of add snapshot listener should get triggered and that will result in LogCat output. So let's try that and see if it happens. I'll update the description to be lovely views and then we will update. And you can see almost immediately, we get the callback triggered on odd, add snapshot listener. The other posts are the same, my favorite panda pick and my hipster look, but the description for the Golden Gate Bridge has been updated as we expect. Now that we're able to complete the query as we desire, our goal for the next video is to take the list of posts and render it in the UI. If you like what we've built so far, please like and share this video and subscribe so you know when part seven comes out. See you in the next one.